Joseph, the honoring presbytery, the diaconate in Christ, for all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our president, civil authorities, and armed forces, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the city and for every city and countryside, and for the faithful who dwell therein. Let us pray to the Lord for health for seasons, for abundance of the fruits of the earth and for peaceful times. Let us pray to the Lord for travelers by sea, by land and by air, the sick, the suffering, the captive, and for their salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all tribulation, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O oh God, by thy grace. Calling to remembrance our all holy, immaculate, most blessed, and the glorious lady that thou follows, and ever virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. For unto thee our all glory, honor, and worship to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, now and ever unto ages of ages. Shall still be consenting to wish they are well pleased, 
They shall hear my words, for they are sweet as when the thickness of the earth is broken upon the ground. Their bones are scattered by the side of hell. But to thee, O Lord, O Lord, are my eyes, in thee have I put my trust. Take not away my soul. Keep me from the snare which they have made for me, and the traps of the workers of iniquity. Let the wicked fall into their own nets, whilst I alone escape. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, with my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. I put up my supplication before him. I shall be for him my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. In the way wherein I walked, and they secretly laid a step for me. I looked on my right hand and beheld, but there was no one that would know me. Refuge failed me, no one cared for my soul. I cried unto thee, O Lord, I said, Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Take my soul out of prison, that I may praise thy name. The righteous shall wait for me until thou recompense me. Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. Accept our evening prayers, O holy Lord. Grant us forgiveness of our sins, for Thou alone hast made manifest the resurrection unto the world. Let Thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. Encompass Zion, O ye people, and surround it. Give ye glory therein, to whom who, to Him who arose from the dead. For He is our God who hath delivered us. From our transgressors. If thou, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, we shall stand, for with thee there is forgiveness. O come, ye people, let us praise Christ and bow down before him, glorifying his resurrection from the dead. For he is our God, who hath delivered the world from the wiles of the enemy. Because of thy name have I waited for thee, O Lord. My soul hath waited upon thy word, my soul hath hoped in the Lord. By thy passion, O Christ, we have been set free from sufferings, and by thy resurrection we have been delivered from corruption, O Lord, glory to thee. From the morning watch until night, from the morning watch, let Israel trust in the Lord. Today that babies grow crying, it were better for me that I had not received the begotten of Mary. For when he approached me, he whose heart power and crushed my gates of brass, arousing the souls which I possessed, he being God. Wherefore, glory be to thy crucifixion and to thy resurrection, O Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is abundant redemption, and he will deliver Israel from all his iniquities. Today, after Hades grown crying, it was better for me that I had not received. The begotten of Mary, for when he approached me, he let me loose my power and crush the gates of brass, arousing the souls which I had possessed. He being God, wherefore glory to be to thy crucifixion and to thy resurrection, O Lord. Praise the Lord, all ye nations, praise Him, all ye people. Today hath Hades grown crying, my power hath vanished, because I received a dead man as one of the dead. But I could not hold him completely, rather I lost with him those who were under my reign. For the beginning of time, I have held control over the dead. But the 
is one raised all. Wherefore, glory be to thy crucifixion and to thy resurrection, O Lord. For his mercy is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Today hath Hades grown, crying, my power hath been swallowed up. For the shepherd crucified hath raised Adam and those whom I have possessed I lost. Those whom I had swallowed by my might, I had given up completely. For the crucified one hath emptied of graves, and the might of death hath vanished. Wherefore, glory to thy cross, O Lord, and to thy resurrection. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, of He 
confirmation of our faith. We have a defender, even the Lord who was born of her. Be both therefore, be both ye people of God, for he be all power. Will vanquish all your enemies. <laughs> Said to him, What is that you have done? 
for the men knew that he was freeing from fleeing from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. When they said to him, What shall we when they said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea grew more and more tempestuous. He said to them, Take me up and throw me into the sea, and the sea will quiet down for you. For I know it is because of me that this great tempest has come upon you. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to bring the ship back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew more and more tempestuous against them. Therefore they cried to the Lord, We beseech thee, O Lord, let us not perish for this man's life, and let us not let not on us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, hast done it as it pleased thee. So they took up Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. And the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. And the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish, saying, I called to the Lord out of I called to the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me, Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and thou didst hear my voice. For thou didst cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood was round about me. All thy waves and thy billows passed over me. Then I said, I am, I am cast out of thy presence. How shall I again look upon the holy temple? The waters closed in over me. The deep was round about me. Weeds were wrapped around about my head and the roots of the mountains. I went down, down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. Yet thou didst bring out my life from the pit, O Lord my God. When, thou, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came before came to thee into the holy temple those who pray regard the vain regard to vain idols forsake their true loyalty but i with the voice of thanksgiving will sacrifice to thee and i have vowed i will i will pay deliverance belongs to the lord and the lord spoke to the fish and it vomited jonah upon the dry land and the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message, the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three, city, three days' journey in breadth. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey. And he cried, Forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed in God, and then proclaimed a fast on sackcloth, and from, from the greatest of them to the least of them. Then tidings reached the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, removed his robe, and covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And he made a proclamation and published throughout Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, that neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything, let him not feed or drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth, and let them cry mightily to God. Yea, let every one turn from his evil way, from the violence which is in his hands. Who knows, God may yet repent and turn from his fierce angles, it anger, so that we perish not. When God saw that what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God repented of the evil which he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. From, but it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was angry. And he prayed to the Lord and said, I pray thee, Lord, is not this what I said when I was in my country? That is why I made haste to flee to Tarshish. For I know that thou art a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and repentest of evil. Therefore now, O Lord, take my life from me, I beseech thee, for it is better me to die than, than to live. And the Lord said, Do you do well to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat to the east of the city. And he made a booth for himself there, and he sat under it in the shade till he, till he should see what would become of the city. And the Lord appointed a plant, and made it come up over Jonah, that it might be a shade over his head, to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was exceedingly glad because of the plant. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm which attacked the plant, so it withered. When the sun rose, God appointed a sultry east wind, and the sun beat upon the head of Jonah, so that he was faint, and he asked that he might die, and said, It is better me, it, it, it is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, Do you do well to be angry for the plant? 
And he said, I do well to be angry, angry enough to die. And the Lord said, you pitied the plant for which, the, for which you did no labor, nor did you make it grow, which came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should not I pity him about a great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right and from their left, and also much cattle. The reading is from the book of Daniel. Let us be attentive. King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits and its breadth six cubits. He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then King Nebuchadnezzar sent to assemble the satraps, the prefects, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then the satraps, the prefects, and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces were assembled before the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And the herald proclaimed aloud, you are commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, you are to fall down and worship the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, as soon as all the peoples heard the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, all the peoples, nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the golden image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Therefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and maliciously accused the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that every man who hears the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into a burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, pay no heed to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music to fall down and worship the image which I have made well and good, but if you do not worship, you shall immediately be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God that will deliver you out of my hands? <clears throat> Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full in fury, and the expression of his face was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace heated seven times more than it was wont to be heated, and he ordered certain mighty men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their mantles, their tunics, their hats, and their, their garments, and they were cast into the burning fiery furnace because the king's order was strict and the furnace very hot. The flame of the fire slew those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell bound into the burning fiery furnace, and they walked about in the midst of the flames, singing hymns to God and blessing the Lord. Then Azariah stood and offered this prayer. In the midst of the fire, he opened his mouth and said, Blessed art thou, O Lord, God of our fathers, and worthy of praise, and thy name is glorified forever, for thou art just in all that thou hast done to us, and all thy works are true, and thy ways right, and all thy judgments are truth. Thou hast executed true judgments in all that thou hast brought upon us and upon Jerusalem, the holy city of our fathers, and in, for in truth and justice thou hast brought all this upon us because of our sins. For we have sinfully and lawlessly departed from thee, 
and have sinned in all things and have not obeyed thy commandments. We have not observed them or done them as thou hast commanded us, that it might go well with us. So all that thou hast brought upon us and all that thou hast done to us, thou hast done in true judgment. Thou hast given us into the hands of lawless enemies, most hateful rebels, and to an unjust king, the most wicked in all the world. And now we cannot open our mouths. Shame and disgrace have befallen thy servants and worshipers. For thy name's sake, do not give us up utterly, and do not break thy covenant, and do not withdraw thy mercy from us. For the sake of Abraham thy beloved, and for the sake of Isaac thy servant, and Israel thy holy one, to whom thou didst promise to make their descendants as many as the stars of heaven, and as the sand on the shore of the sea. For we, O Lord, have become fewer than any nation, and are brought low this day in all the world because of our sins. And at this time, there is no prince or prophet or leader, no burnt offering or sacrifice, or oblation or incense, no place to make an offering before thee or to find mercy. Yet with a contrite heart and a humble spirit, may we be accepted as though it were with burnt offerings of rams and bulls, and with tens of thousands of fat lambs, such that our sacrifice be in thy sight this day. And may we wholly follow thee, for there will be no shame for those who trust in thee. And now with all our heart we follow thee, we fear thee and seek thy face. Do not put us to shame, but deal with us in thy forbearance and in thy abundant mercy. Deliver us in accordance with thy marvelous works, and give glory to thy name, O Lord. Let all who do harm to thy servants be put to shame. Let them be disgraced and deprived of all power and dominion, and let their strength be broken. Let them know that thou art the Lord, the only God, glorious over the whole world. Now the king's servants who threw them in did not cease feeding the furnace fires of naphtha, pitch, tow, and brush. And the flame streamed out above the furnace 49 cubits, and it broke through and burned those of the Chaldeans whom it caught about the furnace. But the angel of the Lord came down into the furnace to be with Azariah and his companions and drove the fiery flame out of the furnace and made the midst of the furnace like a moist whistling wind, so that the fire did not touch them at all or hurt or trouble them. Then the three, as with one mouth, praised and glorified and blessed God in the furnace, saying, Blessed art thou, Lord God of our fathers, and to be praised and highly exalted forever, and blessed is thy glorious holy name, and to be highly praised and exalted forever. Blessed art thou in the temple of thy holy glory, and to be extolled and highly glorified forever. Blessed art thou who sittest upon cherubim, and lookest upon the deeps, and to be praised and highly exalted forever. Blessed art thou upon the throne of thy kingdom, and to be extolled and highly exalted forever. Blessed art thou in the firmament of heaven, and to be sung and glorified forever. Praise the Lord and exalt him more and more. Bless you, the Lord. Praise him and exalt him forever. Praise the Lord and exalt him more and more unto all the angels. Holy angels of the Lord in the heavens of the Lord, bless you, the Lord. Praise the Lord and exalt him more and more unto all the angels. All ye waters set up be above the heavens, and all ye powers of the Lord, bless you, the Lord. Praise the Lord, and please hold him more and more unto all the ages. O ye sun and moon and ye stars of heaven, bless ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, and please hold him more and more unto all the ages. O ye showers and dew and all ye winds, bless ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, and please hold him more and more unto all the ages. O ye dews and snows, ye frost and cold, bless ye the Lord. 
For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the sinful body might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For he who has died is free of sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. For we know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death is no longer has no dominion over him. The, de the death he died, he died in sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives in God, so that you might also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord.
But you like men shall die, and shall fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, and judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit among all the nations. And that we may be accounted worthy to hear the Holy Gospel. Let us beseech the Lord our God. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Wisdom attend, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be to all. And to the From the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Glory to the Lord, glory to thee. Let us attend on the next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests. And the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember how that imposter said while he was still alive, after three days I will rise again. Therefore, order the sepulchre to be made secure until the third day lest his disciples go and steal him away and tell the people he has risen from the dead and the last fraud will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, you have a guard of soldiers, make it as secure as you can. So they went and made the sepulchre secure by sealing the stone and setting a god. Yeah. 
the fearful judgment seat of Christ. Let us have who remembrance our all holy, immaculate, most blessed, and the glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, us men, ourselves, and each other, and all our life unto Christ. Our God, as thou didst accept at the hands of the holy apostles this true ministry, so also do thou, my goodness, O Lord, accept from the hands of us sinners these gifts, having been accounted worthy blamelessly to minister at thy holy altar, we may that we may receive the recompense of wise and faithful stewards in the terrible day of thy just requiting. Through the compassions of thy only begotten Son, with whom thou art blessed, together with thy all holy and good and life-giving spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Let us love one another, that with one accord we may confess. Let us stand right, let us stand with fear, let us attend that we may offer the holy oblation in Just 
actions on your plan. Be the only true and existing God, and our heart to be with a contrite heart and spirit of humility. This our reasonable service. For thou art he who hath graciously bestowed upon us the knowledge of thy truth, and who is the sufficient to speak of thy mighty acts, to make all thy praises to be heard, or to tell of thy wonders in every season. O Master, O Lord of heaven and earth, and all creation, both visible and invisible, who sitteth upon the throne of glory, and beholdest the depths who were not with our without beginning, invisible, incomprehensible, and uncircumscript, immutable, the Father, O Lord Jesus Christ, our great God and Savior, our hope, who is the image of thy goodness. The seal of equal type in himself showing forth thee the Father, the living word, the true God, the wisdom before all the ages, the sanctification, might, the true light through whom the Holy Spirit was manifested, the spirit of truth, the gift of adoption, the pledge of an inheritance to come, the first fruits of eternal good things, the life giving power, the fountain of holiness by whom enabled every rational and intelligent creature doth serve thee and send up to thee perpetual praise for all, all things are thy servants, yea, angels and archangels, thrones, dominions, principalities, authorities, powers, and the many I cherubim praise thee. Round about thee stand the six wings seraphim, with two they cover their faces, with and with two their feet, and with two they fly continually, crying out to one another with unceasing praises, singing the triumphal hymn, shouting, proclaiming, and saying, Holy, 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 Lord of Sabaoth, heaven, and your God, for thy glory. And it's banished in thy righteous judgment of God from paradise and into this world, and turn him again from the earth from which he was taken, providing. For him the salvation of regeneration which is in thy Christ himself. Yet thou didst not turn away forever from thy creature whom thou hast made. O God, O good one, neither didst thou forget the work of thy hands, but thou didst visit him in diverse manners, through did thy tender compassion of thy mercy. Thou didst send forth prophets, thou didst perform mighty works by thy saints, who in every generation were well pleasing unto thee. Thou didst speak to us by the mouths of thy servants, the prophets and who foretold unto us the salvation which was to come. Thou didst give us the law as an aid. Thou didst, thou didst appoint guardian angels, and when the fullness of time was come, thou didst speak unto us through thy Son himself, by whom all thou also madest the ages, who being the brightness of thy glory and the express image of thy person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, thought it not probably to be equal to thee, the God and Father, that although he was God before all the ages, Yet he appeared upon the earth and dwelt among men, and was incarnate of the Holy Virgin, and is empty himself, taking on the form of a servant, and becoming conformed to the fashion of our lowliness, that he might make us conformable to the image of his glory. For as by man sin entered into the world, and by sin death, so it seemed good unto thy only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of God the Father, to be born of a woman, the Holy Theotokos, and every virgin Mary, to be born under the law, that he might condemn sin in his flesh, that they who were dead in Adam might be made alive in thy Christ, and becoming a dweller in this world and giving commandments of salvation, he released us from the delusion of idols and brought us unto a knowledge of thee, the true God our Father, having won us unto himself for his own people, the royal priesthood, a holy nation, having purified us with water and having sanctified us with the Holy Spirit, he gave himself as a ransom to death, whereby we were sold, held, sold into bondage under sin. And having descended, into hell through the cross, that he might fill all things with himself. He loosed the pains of death and rose again from the dead on the third day, making a way for all flesh through the resurrection from the dead. For it was not possible that the author of life should be held by corruption, that he might be the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, the firstborn of the dead, and he shall be in all things the first in all things, and ascending into heaven, 
be set down at the right hand of thy majesty on high, and he shall come again to render unto every man according to his words. And he is left with us as memorials of this, his saving passion, these things which we have spread forth according to his commandments. For when he was about to go to his voluntary and ever memorable and life-creating death, in the night in which he gave himself up for the life of the world, took bread in his holy and spotless hands, and when he had shown it unto thee, the God and Father, and given things and blessed him, and hallowed it and broken him, he gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you, for the remission of sins. In like manner, I was taken up the of the divine, and mingled with the human things, and blessed and hallowed it, gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Drink ye all of this. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sin. my death and confess my resurrection with full master, who we also have in remembrance of saving the passion, the life-giving cross, his three days burial and the resurrection from the dead, his ascension, into heaven and sitting at the right hand of thee, the God and Father, and his glorious and terrible second coming, and offering unto thee thy own of thy own in behalf of all and for We praise thee. We bless thee. Present him unto thee the heavenly types of the holy body and blood of thy Christ. We pray thee and implore thee, O holy of holies, by the favor of thy goodness, that thy Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts here spread forth and bless them and show how them and show this bread. To be itself the body of, the, of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And this cup to be itself the precious blood of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Which was shed for the life of the world and for its salvation. Amen. 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 And as for us, Partakers of the one bread and of the cup, do thou unite us all to one another under communion of the one Holy Spirit in man, that no one of us may partake of thy holy body and blood of thy Christ unto judgment or unto condemnation, but rather that we may find mercy and grace with all the saints who through the ages have been well pleasing unto thee, forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, teachers, and every righteous spirit which has completed this life in faith, especially for all the holy, that the most blessed and the glorious lady, the Pilgrims and the Virgin Thank you. 
churches in peace, safety, honor, health, and length of days, and rightly dividing the word of thy truth. And all mankind. Be mindful, O Lord, every, every bishop of your house rightly divided the word of thy truth. Be mindful, O Lord, of my words, according to most of thy compassion, <laughs> voluntarily and involuntarily. And withhold not because of my sins the grace of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit from these gifts here spread forth. Be mindful, O Lord, of the priesthood, the diaconate in Christ, every priestly rank, and put not to confusion any one of us who stand about thy holy table. Visit us with thy loving kindness, O Lord. Manifest thyself, manifest thyself unto us in thy rich compassions. Grant us temperate and healthful seasons. Give gentle showers upon the earth unto fruitfulness. Bless the crown of the year of thy beneficence. Make the schisms of the churches to cease, quench the ragings of hostile nations, speedily destroying by the might of thy Holy Spirit, uprisings of heresies. Receive us all into thy kingdom, making us children of the light and of the day, and grant unto us thy peace and thy love. O Lord our God, for all things hast thou given unto us. And grant us with one mouth and one heart to glorify and praise that all honorable and majestic name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever 
and to ages of ages. And the seats of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with you all. Happy commemorate all the saints again and again in peace. Let us pray to the Lord for the precious gifts which have been spread forth and sanctified. Let us pray to the Lord that our God, who loveth mankind, receiving them upon his holy most heavenly and ideal altar as a savor of spiritual sweetness, will send down upon us and return his divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Asking for the unity of the faith and the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. And about safe, O Master, that with boldness and without condemnation we may dare to call upon thee, the heavenly God as Father, and to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever unto ages of ages. Amen. Neither will I give thee a kiss, Mr. Judas, 
but like the thief will I confess thee. Remember me, O Lord, in my kingdom, not unto judgment, nor unto condemnation. Be my partaking of thy holy mysteries, O Lord, but unto the healing of soul and body. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Oh God, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. We have seen Take us not to hope on thee. Give peace to thy world, to thy churches, to the priests, to the civil authorities, to the armed forces, and to all thy people. For all good giving, and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from thee, the Father of lights. And unto thee we ascribe glory, thanksgiving, and worship to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, now and ever unto ages of ages. Glory to thee. Amen. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Father bless. May Christ, our true God, through the intercessions of his own Matthew, and all blameless Holy Mother, by the might of the precious and life-giving cross, by the protection of the honorable bodiless powers of heaven, at the supplication of the honorable glorious prophet, forerunner, and Baptist John, of the holy glorious a lot of apostles, the holy glorious and right the glorious martyrs of our venerable and God-bearing fathers, who shone in the ascetic life of the three holy hierarchs, these and the great Peter the theologian, and John Chrysostom, the patrons and protectors of this holy community, of the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Dana, and of all the saints, have mercy upon us and save us, for as much as he is good and loveth mankind through the prayers of our holy fathers, O Lord Jesus Christ our God, have mercy upon us and save us. Amen. Glory be to our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ. So we have come to this beautiful Saturday morning in which we commemorate our Lord's traveling down of death and Hades and his taking from the devil his one power that he had, the one thing that he had over us is gone now through our Lord's descent into Hades and his trampling down of death. So glory to God and we will gather again at 1030 this evening. You have to take a nap. You have to take a nap. I wonder how many of you are going to tune in at 1030. <laughs> the liturgy will end earlier than normal really because of very few people to take communion and so forth. But we hope it will be, we hope that we will feel everyone's presence here along with the angels and the saints and have a glorious Pascha. It'll be a little bit hard to pull off logistically with so few people. All the things that have to be done so, and remember the Metropolitan is not allowing us to do our procession. Uh, we'll just go out one door and meet over here at the other door. But uh, it'll be Pascha. And uh, I expect to hear you when I proclaim the Paschal greeting. I expect to hear you responding. Um, I want to acknowledge and thank my brethren who have borne born with me throughout the week, uh, the chanters and servers and streamers, <laughs> whatever else kinds we have here. Um, I thank them from the bottom of my heart and uh, by their prayers, I rose from the dead, <laughs> <laughs> rose from diverticulitis, and by your prayers, I appreciate your prayers. So God bless you and keep you, and we'll see you this tonight. Glory to thee, O God. Glory to thee, O God. Glory to thee, O God. I thank thee, O Lord, my God, that thou hast not rejected me a sinner, but hast vouchsafed me to become a communicant to thy holy things. I thank thee that thou hast vouchsafed me the unworthy to partake of thine immaculate and heavenly gifts. But, O Master, who lovest mankind, who didst mm -hmm. both die for us and rise again, and didst bestow upon us these thy dread and life-giving mysteries for the benefit and sanctification of our souls and bodies, grant that they may be also for me unto healing of soul and body, unto the averting of everything contrary thereto, unto the enlightenment of the eyes of my heart unto the peace of my spiritual powers, unto faith unashamed, unto love unfeigned, unto increase of wisdom, 
unto the fulfillment of thy commandments, unto growth in thy divine grace, and the attainment of thy kingdom, that preserved by them in thy holiness, I may ever remember thy grace, and henceforth live not unto myself, but unto thee, our master and benefactor. And thus, when this life is ended, in the hope of eternal life, I may attain unto everlasting rest, where the voice of those who keep festival is unceasing, and the delight of those who behold the ineffable beauty of thy countenance is boundless. For thou art the true desire and unutterable joy of those who love thee, O Christ our God, and all creation him with thee forever. Amen. O Master Christ, our God, King of the ages and maker of all things, I thank thee for all the good things which thou hast bestowed upon me, and for this partaking of thine immaculate and life-giving mysteries. Wherefore, I pray thee, Lord, good and lovest mankind, keep me under thy protection, and in the shadow of thy wings, and grant unto me with a pure conscience, and even unto my last breath, to partake of thy holy things, unto forgiveness of sins, and unto life everlasting. For thou art the bread of life, the fountain of holiness, the giver of good things, and unto thee we ascribe glory forever together with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. O thou who willingly dost give thy flesh to me as food, thou who art a fire, consuming the unworthy, consume me not, O my Creator, but rather pass through all my body parts, into all my joints, my reins, my heart. Burn thou the thorns of all my transgressions, cleanse my soul, and hallow thou my thoughts. Make firm my knees and my bones likewise, enlighten as one my five senses, Establish me wholly in thy fear, ever shelter me, guard and keep me from every soul corrupting deed and word. Cleanse me, purify me, and control me. Adorn me, teach and enlighten me. Show me to be a dwelling place of thy spirit, and in no wise the dwelling place of sin. That from me thy habitation, through the entrance of thy communion, every evil deed and every passion may flee as from fire. As intercessors I bring to the, to the all the sanctified. Both the leaders of the bodiless powers, thy forerunner and thy wise apostles, and besides thee, thine immaculate and pure mother, do thou receive their prayers, O my Christ, who are compassionate, and make thy servant to be a child of the light. For thou alone, O good one, art the sanctification and splendor of our souls, and to thee as God and Master, day by day, we all ascribe glory. May thy holy body, o Lord Jesus Christ, our God, be unto me for life eternal, and thy precious blood unto forgiveness of my sins. May this Eucharist be unto me for joy, health, and gladness, and that thy fearful second coming make me the sinner worthy to stand at the right hand of thy glory through the intercessions of thine all-immaculate mother and of all thy saints. Amen. O holy lady, Theotokos, light of my darkened soul, my hope, my shelter, my refuge, my consolation, and my joy, I thank thee that thou hast accounted me worthy, although unworthy, to be partaker of the immaculate body and precious blood of thy son. But do thou who gave us birth to the true light, enlighten the spiritual eyes of my heart. O thou who didst spare the fountain of immortality, enlighten thou me who lie dead in sin. O compassion loving mother of the merciful God, have mercy on me, and grant me compunction and contrition of heart, and humility in my thoughts and deliverance from the bondage of my vain imaginings. And account me worthy even, to, even unto my last breath to receive without condemnation the sanctification of the Immaculate Mysteries, and to the healing of both soul and body, and grant unto me tears of repentance and confession, that I may hymn thee and glorify thee all the days of my life. For blessed and glorified art thou unto all ages. Amen. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of thy people, a light to light in the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people Israel. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. All holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, cleanse us from our sins. Master, pardon our iniquities. Holy God, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. 
Thy sound hath gone out unto all the earth, for it hath received thy word. Thereby didst thou teach divine doctrine, make clear the nature of existence, and order the inhabitants of men, O thou of the royal priesthood, venerable Father Basil, beseech Christ our God and to grant us great mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, that is to appear as an unshakable foundation of the church, dispensing an inviolate dominion to all mortals, and sealing it with thy doctrines, O revealer of heavenly things, venerable Basil, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages, amen. The church is revealed to all as a brilliantly lit heaven, leading the faithful in the way of life. Standing therein, we cry aloud, make firm the foundation of this house, O Lord. Lord of mercy, 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 Lord of mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, from now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Thou who without corruption bearest God the word, and are truly Theotokos, who magnify thee. Bless Father in the name of the Lord. God be gracious to us and bless us. May show the light to thy countenance upon us and to be merciful unto us. Amen. Glory to thee, O Christ, our God and our King. Glory to Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Father. May Christ, our true God, through the intercessions of his immaculate and all blameless Holy Mother, of our Father among the saints, Basil of the Great Archbishop of Caesarea, Whose divine liturgy we celebrated together with Gregory the Theologian and John Chrysostom, the patrons and protectors of our holy community, of the holy and righteous ancestors of God, you are the human and of all the saints. Have mercy upon us and save us for as much as he is good and loveth mankind. Through the prayers of our holy fathers, the Lord Jesus Christ, our God. Have mercy upon us and save us. Amen. Amen.